O God, who reigns forever, and to whom eternal shouts of hallelujahs resound, we, your blood-bought people, come now to worship you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Shall we rise to sing our opening hymn? All creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Jacobs to open our service in prayer. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we are thankful and grateful to be in your holy presence, knowing that in you we have life abundantly that comes from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask this day, Lord, as we bless your holy name, that you speak to us and may everything that we do or say give honor and glory unto Jesus Christ, our precious Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. And I want to extend to you a warm welcome from Open Door Believers Chapel. We are a Plymouth Brethren Assembly. We remind you each week, the, this assembly is run by elders. There are five of us, including myself. And we ask, we always ask our members to pray for one another and pray for us as elders as we lead God's people. This morning we have some visitors, some friends of Uncle Roy and Aunt Helen, Arnold and Allison and Henry Parker. They're seated to my left. I want to welcome them and uh, thanks for coming. Welcome to everybody. I want to remind you of our midweek family fellowship every Wednesday on Zoom at 7 o'clock, 7 to 9. We meet as a congregation for our um, believers Fellowship. So please remember to come up, let me come out, log in, <laughs> log on on Wednesdays. Um, I suppose, you know, it, as the government, we hope, loosens the restrictions, soon we'll be able to meet together on Wednesday evenings here. 
but until that time, we, we are meeting online on Zoom every Wednesday at 7 p.m. This week, we did not get a chance to do our Bible reading on eldership. Right after my father did the series on eldership, we went straight into the series with um, Sean. So we're going to come back to the Bible reading on eldership. So if you have any questions about the leadership of the church, you can send a message, the, the question to myself or to Noma or any other elders or wives, and we'll address those questions on Wednesday. Remember, on Friday, we have our Bible club. Starts at 3 p.m. So 3 to 4, Bible club right here at um, Open Door at the, at the church here. We're going to start baptism classes in May. I know some persons have indicated that they, they want to be baptized. Some persons have told Stacia and myself, if you have been coming here and you have put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you want to be baptized, please give me your name. Um, we'll, we'll make a, a list. And uh, we hope to start the classes on the 8th of May. So May the 8th, we'll start our baptism classes. We usually have four or five classes after which we have a baptismal service. At this time, we're going to have an item. It's going to be a song called Thank You, Lord, for the Blood Applied. And it will be done by our sisters, Nicole Bembridge, Stacia Scott, and Lula Bennett. a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the bridge was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your side so you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I own, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time.
always a beautiful experience to be in the house of the Lord. Today, during our time of worship, as we praise the Lord, we'll center our thoughts on one word today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, but hallelujah. Shall we rise? Hallelujah. Oh. 
continue our worship as we bow our knee before the holy throne of God.
this, uh, this part of the service where we have our congregational reading. I like to tell people it's the most important aspect of our service as we get a chance together as a people of God to read his holy and pure word. Brother Nathan Scott will lead us. And the passage today is taken from Revelation chapter 19. And after these things, I heard, I heard a, a great, great voice of much people in heaven, heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For true and righteous are his judgments. And again they said, Alleluia. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Alleluia. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Many years ago, in fact, over 50 years ago, I think Andre Crouch put a little melody to this one word. Hallelujah. It's number 19 in our songbooks, not the songbook, not the hymn book. No music. And close your eyes as we sing hallelujah. Just to remind you, some of the newer ones, the younger ones, don't know this song. But after we did one, one round, I have the, the best can to go in, the higher sopranos, mezzo sopranos. <clears throat> So, for silent reflection.
shall we rise? Sing unto the Lord and you
weeks ago, someone of the younger generation, not compared to mine, asked me if I could help them solve a riddle. That was their words, a riddle. Well, of course, I braced myself for some modern brain basher. And then the person humbly said, I have a little assignment to find out what this statement means. Hella top, hella bottom, hallelujah, in the middle. Well, I smiled. The person genuinely wanted a generational explanation. And for a few moments of this modern world, I felt proud of my humble upbringings. That's how my grandma used to bake a pudding, a potato pong, right? On the fire heart. In fact, the person had never even seen a fire heart. Everybody have these modern ovens in the kitchen. No, once it wasn't like that, you better well cook outside. <laughs> And I explained how they put the fire underneath with wood or coconut husks or, you know, or shells and a zinc on top and the fire on top. And all the children would sit around it waiting like dogs panting. Because they knew when that was over, whoo, it was something worthy of praise by the taste buds. And hallelujah, best described it. Well, from ancient biblical times, the proclamation of praise, that was our theme in worship this morning. Hallelujah has had many uses. We use it for our potato pong. But in the Bible times, it was used to describe a most beautiful woman. Well, you fellas know about that. And when you read the Bible, you see that, as we read this morning, both residents of heaven and people on earth use the word hallelujah for different reasons. Now, in the secular world now, it was the highest expression of commendation. When men saw a woman of beauty, hallelujah was a colloquial word, a colloquial admiration for a thing of beauty in the secular world. So you saw a woman, a very beautiful woman, what would you say? Hallelujah. No, if somebody do that today, they say they're crazy, huh? But do you remember when Abraham went down to Egypt? His wife was so beautiful that he knew wherever he went, he risked his life. People would kill him just against she. And when the princes of Pharaoh, the officials of his palace, saw her, Abraham told a lie. He said, aye, 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 she's my sister. So, I cool, you know, can I wait? She was 65 years old. Not a wrinkle. Wow. The beauty of the Lord radiated from the woman's body and life. As Proverbs 30, 31 says, godliness was her beauty. That's what some young ladies have to understand. She didn't bite at the beauty parlor. And in Genesis 12, 15, the officials praised her beauty as they commended her before Pharaoh. And all they could say is, hallelujah, Pharaoh, you have to see this woman. And when Pharaoh saw it, he flipped. Oh, he flipped. He seized her, you know, he took her. He said, man, I, I must have this. No, when a Creole man says a woman, what said? I'm going to tell you, in English, they say, wow. 
W-O-W, right? A cruel man of pronouns who home said, Wow! W-A-W. Men, married men here, do you remember the first time you set your eyes on your woman? The woman beside you? By the way, ladies, they say when a man falls in love, he never speaks to himself more. He talks to himself, you know, because you know what his friend knows, but he, he, he just, he, he's not in the world. Well, because they can't get over it. I will tell you what I'm said. When he's talking to himself. Yeah. You make my heart jump out of his socket. <laughs> and he jumps right back in again. And he keeps telling himself this all day. Thanks to our Creole consultant, Sister Yvette. But I'm going to ask the men because I'm free to do this now, you know. Free, single, and disengaged. When last has your heart jumped as you admired your wife again? Some men have lost it. There's something you need to pray about, you know. And ask the Holy Spirit to restore that first moment. That is what keeps love alive. And when you have lost it, Everybody know. Hallelujah was a colloquial admiration. It was also a common shout of adoration for the religious world. And it was used in connection with the victorious judgment over the enemy. Hallelujah when they caught up, you know, an enemy. It was the response of the Philistines in Judges 16, 24. Oh, as they shouted praises. That's what they say, no? We say praises, it's hallelujah. They shouted praises to their idol, Dagon. Why? Mr. Samson was finally caught. Samson terrorized them, you know, one man, you know, one man. Because the anointing of God was on his life. And there now, in the temple of Dagon, was Samson, humbly bound in chains, blinded in the eyes, and shorn bald, as the Philistines made shouts of praise, hallelujahs, to their god Dagon for capturing Samson. They weren't noticing that his ear was going back. And they paid the price for it. It is also said in the Bible, used in the same kind of connection by the psalmist in Psalm 104, verse 35. At the end of the psalm, the psalmist says, Let the sinners be consumed. Imagine if I get a bit church one Sunday morning and start to pray, Let the sinners, O oh Lord, be consumed. He said, Brother, did you get crazy? What's the word of God? Let them be consumed from the earth and let the wicked be no more. And if you look back in life, you can see that there are some real wicked people, you know. I remember a brother called me once, an old man, a little man, he says, and he called that name of a so called brother, no? And he says, that man's a wicked man, but to me, he was a good man. And he says, you know, what is his problem? You read the psalm. He borrows without the intention of paying again. You get me? So while he was smiling, others were crying. That was a way of life for him. He never killed anyone, but he found a way to rob you. With a smile on his face. The Bible said the wicked borrow it and pay it not again. I never forgot that verse. Whenever I saw that brother, I turned my head the other way. Because I didn't have anything... To let him smile over and me cry over. But you know, the verse goes on to say, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And in the original language, it closes up with the word, Hallelujah. You know what English version you see, it said, Praise the Lord. Well, that is what we read about this morning when Brother Nathan Scott came here and read. The declaration, and we joined in happily with him. Hallelujah, four times. The only time in the New Testament. 
Four times it is mentioned, only passage. This is what took place as a congregational shout of praise in heaven. When the saints in heaven looked back at how they were treated and humbled over the centuries, but now it had come to an end. Let us read it together again from our song sheets. It's taken, as I said, from Revelation 19, 1 to 6. I purposely didn't put the passage on it. And this is taking place in heaven. And uh, everybody together. And after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. And listen to this next time. Look at it carefully. For true and righteous are his judgments. We can't say that about ourselves. We judge people without even knowing the facts. Not God. No. And again they said, Hallelujah. And her smoke rose up forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen. Hallelujah. And a voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thunderings saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. The word of the Lord. You know, if you are a believer here today, you will be a part of this great multitude, you know. So catch your practice from now, man. Hallelujah. was used in the early church as a congregational acclamation, as we did today. When anyone was blessed during the service, they would shout, Hallelujah, depending on where they were, of course. Or after the reading of the scriptures, as we did today, some would shout, Hallelujah, as they praised God for his holy word. And it was used as we did it this morning in their singing. Now, strangely, a little song we sing, hallelujah. Just one word. Different people use it in different languages. Same word. No matter which language they speak. Different customs, they use it. Different cultures, hallelujah. One word. And people still use it today. But you know what they call it in the early church? The wordless hymn. Imagine that. One word, because no other words needed, needed to be added. They just sang hallelujah. Different tunes. In fact, I was in a group once when, when somewhere like saying hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Different rhythm completely. But when it was put together, it was the most beautiful thing. Now, don't try to be your children. You might lose hope. But we still sing hallelujahs as we did this morning. In many of our hymns, usually at the Lord's Supper, we sing one that Philip Bliss wrote. You know, Man of Sorrows, what a name. For the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. And it was as if Philip was running out of words. But as he, as he considered the great cross work of the Lord Jesus Christ, the holy God who shed his precious blood for the sin of the world, as the group sang about this morning, and as he contemplated on the beauties of Jesus, who knew no sin, the Lamb of God dying for the sin of the world, each stanza of that beautiful hymn closes with a shout of praise to the Lord. He just 
Hallelujah. What a savior. So hallelujah was used as a colloquial admiration, a communal adoration, and a congregational acclamation. Lastly, it was used as a conclusional affirmation. A doxology. You look at many of the Psalms, that's how the Psalms end. Praise the Lord to us in the English Bible. But as I said earlier, it's simply the word hallelujah. And most of all, in the early church, it was one of the words all shouted when they could because sometimes they worshipped in secret. At the end of the service, as a conclusional affirmation, when everything had been sung, everything had been said and done, there was a shout of praise by the congregation. Hallelujah! And I guess all the children were happy then. Hmm? Brother Nando was telling me that in the class that we have, that when Jonathan was growing up, he was coloring a book, not paying any attention to the service. But as we reached, praise God from, he started saying, oh, church, don't you pack up in the bag. You see it? A little baby, you know, but the signal. So let us pray. Oh God, thou who art deserving of all praise, may our spirit led hallelujahs be worthy proclamations of praise to you in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed. Hallelujah. 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 Shall we rise? Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. And let all the people say Amen and Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 106 verse 48. God bless you. Thanks for worshiping with us today.